Now, the next thing which I want to talk about is the IFC import feature, which we have implemented in this version of uh, Comosis. Now, IFC is fast becoming the standard mode of uh, interoperability between uh, programs. All the major software which we use in the construction industry, uh, they're all trying to have IFC import and ex uh, export capabilities inside their softwares. Now, as you would uh, already know, uh, we already had the IFC export feature uh, inside Comosis. So if you go to the file menu, there is import export over here. If you go to the export one, uh, we already have had the IFC export feature. But uh, as of this release, we now uh, also have the IFC import uh, feature in, uh, implemented in Comosis. Before I begin talking about the details of the IFC import feature, let me uh, just start off by saying that the IFC standard is a very generic, uh, uh, very generic format. And unfortunately, many programs implement it differently. So there's not a standard way of, um, uh, of implementation of the program. So uh, while some will um, implement it more intelligently than others, so in some cases you're able to extract, um, for example, the profile information and the material information, uh, basically being, uh, giving you the ability to convert these objects into native objects. But in some programs, the implementation is such that uh, you are not you're not un, you're not able to convert it into your own native profiles so i'll talk about these things uh, as we go along but this, i just wanted to say that up front now let me take you through the actual steps of importing an ifc file and for that what we do is we just simply go to the file menu and we go to the import and export section uh, go to the import one over here and then select the ifc import button when we do that, this little um, dialog box appears on the screen. And as you can see at the top, there is this uh, link through which you can select the actual IFC file. I'll do that in a second. But before I do that, let me uh, explain the options over here. So on the left-hand side, we have uh, what, what are we allowed to import? We are allowed to import profiles, plates, solids, and cuts. So it will try to import all the profiles in the IFC file as native objects, if possible. Uh, plates as well as uh, the plates as native objects, even solids. So you might have some equipment or some piping or some uh, other architectural details which you might need to import. And even the cuts which have been implemented on top of these profiles and plates and solids, uh, you can ask Comosis to import them. So as you can see, it's pretty comprehensive. And on the right-hand side over here, you have the option of converting the profiles and the plates to solids. Now, what that means is that sometimes we might not want to import the profiles as native objects. We just want to see them on the screen. Uh, we want to, you know, work around them, but we don't want them to be converted into local into the native profile objects. So, in those cases, what we can do is we can just say convert to solids and the profiles and the plates will then be converted to solids. Now, like I'd mentioned uh, earlier as well, IFC being a very generic format, um, different softwares implement the IFC standard uh, in different ways. So sometimes it, they are implemented in such a way that it becomes impossible or almost impossible to uh, convert the profiles into native objects. They can only be converted to solids in any case. So there is this option of convert any unknown profile section to solid. What that tells Comosis is that try to convert it to, to, the native, uh, to a native profile. But if you cannot, then you can convert it into a solid. Similarly, there's the option of do not import duplicate profile sections, profiles in the same location because they'll create a clash. And you have this option of auto-generate solid level of details. Um, so what that means is that sometimes you have generic solids which are very complex and they have literally thousands upon thousands of polygons and they um, you know uh, they make your rendering experience little less um, enjoyable and in those cases you, what you can do is you can auto generate the solid level of details and it will make the rendering faster what you also have what you can also do over here is create four groups 
uh, you can give them names. And what Comosis will do is it will create the same groups under the Groups tab over here. And it will import the profiles into the profile group, the plates into the plate group, the solids into the solid group, and the cuts into the cuts group. And uh, then that what that will do is it will help you select those items separately or uh, maybe filter them out uh, separately. Uh, so that's a big advantage which you can have by using the group. Now let me just actually import a file and go through the steps with you. So we, like I said, this is the place where we actually show the file. So let me press these three buttons over here. And um, if I were to go to my, like you can browse through your, uh, using the browser to any, any place you want where you have kept your IFC files. And over here, I have some uh, examples of IFC files. I've got an example of AutoCAD, another example of AutoCAD with some solids, some example from the eTabs program, an example from uh, the Revit program, and also an example from Tecla, um, a Tecla example. So let me start off with the AutoCAD formwork uh, one. Let me go inside there and see the RFC. This is an RC, RC building IFC file. And if I say open, and if I say import, if I press the import button, I haven't made any changes over here. If I just press uh, import, what it will do is it will it will bring up this new dialog box over here. And if you notice, there there are, there's a material map and there's a profile map. So there are two things over here. One is a material map. It hasn't found any material definition in the IFC file. And normally these are mapping. Uh, mapping might be needed. So if if it had certain materials in the IFC file, it would have shown those those materials over here and would, it would have asked you for the corresponding materials in Comosis. Similarly, if you go to the profiles, um, a profile map over here, it, it, it's, it tells you that I have found a profile in the IFC file with this name, and uh, I have found a similar profile in Comosis as well with this name, and this one has, the, I found a similar one, but there's another one which wasn't really named, and so you can, you can write your own profile, the corresponding uh, Comosis profile over here, what you can do is you can uh, either write it directly or you can double click it over here and actually select any profile from the Comosis uh, database. So once you're okay with the profile map and the, and the material map, you can say confirm. And when you do that, it will bring in according to those, the mapping of the profile and the material which you have provided. And as you can see, immediately it brings in uh, an AutoCAD file. And if you notice, it has converted them into um, native objects, the beams and the and the columns have been converted into uh, native objects. Now let's do another example. Let's go to the IFC import once again, and this time let's choose another file, the other one, for example, TR nine one one ten, and let's say open. Let me select that and say open, and then I can just say import, and once again it brings me the material map. So there's one material this time, and it's undefined in the original IFC file. So I can say that you bring it in as whatever SD52 material in my uh, when you're reporting it. Similarly, if I go to the profile map, it hasn't found any profile in this uh, in this whole thing. So I can just say confirm, and it is just going to bring in a solid. Uh, there are, These are all solids. None of these have been entered in the original IFC profile, uh, IFC um, file as profiles. They're all, they've all, um, been entered as as solids, so that is the reason it, it doesn't know what to do do with them and it can't convert them into a into a native object, but it can show them to you on uh, show them to you on the screen. So this is a very handy feature. What it allows you to do is e even if the profiles are not convertible into local native profiles, it'll still still bring them on the screen and you will be able to then work around them in your in your own. This time around, let's choose another IFC file and let's uh, choose it from a different uh, program. So let's do an eTabs example, for example. And let's this file has been imported from the eTabs uh, program and let's uh, open it. And once again, press the import button. This time it, it, it hasn't found any material definition inside the file. So that's interesting. If I go to the profile maps, it has found these three profiles, and it, it has also found the corresponding uh, Comosis names in the in the profile database. So we can just confirm that, and immediately the uh, the file has been imported as native objects, but their material definition has been set as default because it couldn't really find any material for them. So this is once again very easy and quick way. And like like I said, 
uh, in this case, you can just continue your modeling directly in Commerces because you now have the model in, in the native uh, format of Commerces. Now let's do a Revit example. So let me go and select my IFC import, go to my three dots over here, uh, go to the Revit file. This has been exported from Revit. I've got more than one example. Let me just take this one, for example, um, and import that one. And you can see that it uh, brings you this uh, material map. So there's so many materials which have, which have been defined in the Revit file, and they don't have the corresponding names in, in Commerces. So what you can, if you don't select anything, then they'll be imported with standard names. But if you if you want, you can actually select the corresponding names. And similarly for profiles, there's no profile. It's all generic solids. So we just say confirm. Uh, immediately, we see that the, that the building has been uh, imported into uh, Commerces. And you can see all the details. So you, these are all uh, separate pieces. If you zoom into that, even the architectural uh, leaves and trees they have been imported into, and you can you can now work around this uh, this model, which has been imported from the Revit uh, ecosystem. So very convenient. It, uh, it makes the whole process very convenient and handy. All you need to do is just go and select your IFC file, do the do the mapping, and you will get your. Finally, let's take you through the Tecla example. Let me press on these two two dots once again. There's a Tecla model over here. Uh, we can just double click on that and press import and it will bring in the mapping of the materials found in the Tecla model and the materials which equivalent materials found in, in Commerces and you, like I said you can add those. There's also a profile map and you can uh, you, you can add those. If you, if you don't select something a standard default uh, profile will be used. So let me just accept these settings right now. Press confirm and you see that the model has, is being started. Uh, the Commerces has started the import. Uh, of the model. This is a fairly large, complicated model. So it's going to take uh, some time. The, 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 um, the import will take certain amount of time, but it will finish, uh, finish the job. And there, as you see on the screen, it has finished importing the entire structure from Tecla. It's a pretty complicated structure. It has all the plates and the profiles and the generic solids, and they have been, uh, they have been imported uh, as intelligent objects where, uh, or as solids, depending on whether it has found a corresponding uh, native element in, in Commerces or not. So this is an example of an IFC import from, uh, from an IFC file taken from, uh, from Tecla. I want to do one more example of actual equipment. Uh, so you will require in certain cases to import equipment, for example, in the form of IFC files. So I have an example over here. Let me go, it's this one, it's imported from an AutoCAD file. And let me just press that and press the uh, import button. It starts reading the file and it gives us a map. Uh, once again, as always, it gives us, takes us to this material map and the profile map. I can just say confirm. And once it's done, you can see the results on the screen. It has brought in this equipment uh, file uh, into, into Commerces, and now you can work your way uh, around it and create your model around it. As, you can, as I talked about, some of these objects are very complicated, and uh, the level of detail has also been implemented. So for example, if I, were, if I were to look at this object, it's basically looking like a box. But when I zoom in, you, uh, at certain point, you start seeing the details, and if, if you see, it's 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 a very very detailed object with all sorts of detail inside it. And uh, what it has done is it has allowed you to uh, basically look at it uh, in that in that way. If I zoom into that, you see the level of detail is changing. So this is a very handy and convenient way of importing equ equipment through the IFC format into your Commerces model. And we really hope that uh, the, our, our clients uh, really wanted the IFC import feature because they were working with other programs and they wanted to continue in Commerces uh, after having done their basic work in the, in the other software. And they wanted to continue the detailing inside Commerces. So with this feature now, which we have Im implemented in this new version of Commerces, we hope that you will, you will really enjoy working with Commerces even more. Another um, interoperability feature which I want to talk about is the new export to SAP 2000 
uh, feature which we have added to Commosus in this version. Many of our clients uh, are already using the SAP 2000 uh, software for analysis and design of structures. And sometimes they feel the need that they get models from other places or they want to import into Commosus or export from Commosus. And uh, the, the, the real need which they feel is they want to confirm the analysis results inside Commosus because they're familiar with the SAP 2000 interface. So there, was a lot of there were a lot of requests in this regard. So what we did was we added, if you go to the file menu and go to the import export menu, uh, in, under the export uh, menu, we, have, we previously had only the SAP 2000 version seven export, which was pretty outdated. But now we've added the SAP 2000 version 22. And all you need to do is just click on that and it'll take, you can select any place. You can just give it a name, uh, any file name which you want. And once you do that, uh, the file will be exported to the location. And it, what it does it, is it, it creates two files. One is the S2K file. But more than that, it also uh, exports a PRO file, which is the profile section database. And the advantage this gives you is that basically the entire database as it appears in Commosus is exported to the SAP library as well. And that, uh, what that results is that you can actually compare the analysis results and they will be uh, exact to whatever, um, you know, fifth decimal place if you want. Uh, because normally the section properties in, in two different programs can be slightly different. Uh, the moment of inertia, for example, the radii of gyration, the, uh, the cross-sectional areas, those kinds of things. And if there are minor variations, then that leads to minor uh, differences in the Indian an analysis results as well. So we didn't. Uh, we, so because we knew that the purpose, the reason why our clients were requesting for this feature was because they wanted to compare the results. So we basically exported the exact section parameters which were uh, on the Commosis side. And now uh, by a simple click, the user can just go to the to the SAP 2000 side. Uh, import the S S2K files along with the uh, PRO file. And uh, the only thing they need to do is that inside the S2K file, there is a reference to the PRO file, which is the section parameters. And there's a there's a path, local path. So this local path is basically um, dependent on your machine. So if you're giving it to someone else to use, then you need to change the path uh, of the PRO file given in the S2K. This is a simple find and replace command. You just look for all the um, all the uh, instances where the PRO file has been mentioned and then quickly find and replace with the new path and you will be able to use it. Now, once you do uh, do that, once you export your S2K file and your uh, PRO, which is the section properties file, and you go into your SAP 2000 application, you will see that the entire model along with the loads and the load combinations Basically, everything you need to just press the run button has been um, has been transported, has been exported into the application, and this will be a very convenient way for you to compare the design, to compare the analysis results and the design results if need be, and see how accurate Commosis's analysis engine is.